movies, television, I have no idea. music, the art. From backstage to center stage, it's all happening on the lot. We're coming to you from the Radford Studio Center lot in Studio City, right over the hill from Hollywood. This is the place where dreams are made, legends are born. Now on the lot, Owen Wilson takes us inside his secret headquarters. Hello. <laughs> what does Rue have in store for this season of Secret Celebrity Drag Race? And the hottest new K-pop act talks exclusively to us. That and so much more on The Lot. Hello and welcome to The Lot. I'm Suzanne Marquez. A new kids fantasy film just released on Paramount Plus. Secret Headquarters stars Owen Wilson as a dad who says he works in IT, but really, he's secretly saving the world. Sorry about the game, but we're gonna have fun tonight. Secret Headquarters is a sci-fi adventure about a boy who discovers his dad is too busy to spend time with him because he's rescuing the world from aliens. Owen Wilson is dad, Jack Kincaid. Walker Scobell plays his son, Charlie. And Walker, what was it like having Owen Wilson play your dad and like the coolest dad on the planet? It was, um, I think the first movie I ever watched was Cars 2. Aww. And so having Lightning McQueen as my dad was a little weird. Uh, <laughs> but it was pretty awesome, yeah. Hey mom, dad has a work emergency, so can you come pick me up? I love it when you call me mom. Let's throw a rager. During a house party, Charlie and his friends discover Dad's secret, his tricked out man cave, and the cool gadgets that come with it. Meet the four friends. I play Burger, Charlie's best friend. He's a really nice, easygoing guy, and one of his main challenges is most likely his allergies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I play Maya, and she is a transfer student. She has some past history with Charlie. I play Big Mac, and he's truthfully just dealing with everything. He's so worried about everything and he has no idea of what's going on half the time. I play the role of Lizzie and Lizzie is super outgoing. She's a girly girl. She's a straight A student. She loves escape rooms and puzzles. The kids loved working with Owen because just like in Marley and Me, he often had his own golden retriever by his side. He would bring his dog on set and we'd get to play with them. And he would ride his bike with his dog on the side. Yeah. It's funny, I've worked on movies where a lot of people bring dogs to set and uh, yeah, it's just something, I guess there's a reason why they're man's best friend. What are you gonna do, tickle torture me? Jesse Williams and Michael Pena play the bad guys. Okay, so I'm a fellow parent and I always love when it's a movie where I can take my kids. Um, do your kids get excited about these roles or are they not impressed anymore? That's the interesting thing. My, my son is 13 now. I just it was eavesdropping. He was talking to one of his friends, a group of friends, and he's like, you know, my dad's, yeah, and this and then that. And I was like, oh, oh let's go, dude, it's working. <laughs> I want them to enjoy it and know that, you know, and be, and be proud of their dad. And I was like ear hustling too in the screening. Like I'm watching them talk to their <laughs> friends and get excited. And I heard my daughter be like, and there's my dad. He got the winter suit. Secret Headquarters is rated PG exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. These celebrities are sitting on a secret. Love this opportunity to go all in. People have always known who I am. I can't hide. This is a new discovery for me. This is going to shock the hell out of everybody. Nine notable names are battling it out on season two of RuPaul's Secret Celebrity Drag Race. The mystery queens will get snatched and face off in fierce lip sync showdowns. Sashay away or Shantae, you stay. Catch season two of RuPaul's Secret Celebrity Drag Race on VH1. Overall, RuPaul's Drag Race has won 24 Emmy Awards. Both the show and host RuPaul are nominated again this year and saying Dragulations isn't just enough. The gals were muy caliente, both in their looks and in the heat, honey, as they posed in front of the unveiling of a mural adorned with their gorgeous faces. The RuPaul realness is located next to the trendy Carrera Cafe in West Hollywood. Oh my goodness. I think that it is so creative. It is so beautiful. It's very colourful. Yeah, I tried to match it today with the car pop, you, and I did. Pop could mean anything. Yes, it, and it was really cute. 
It, it's cool. It's like fan art that like literally lives in somebody else's city. Work. And if you post a photo online, just tag RuPaul's Drag Race. VH1 will make a donation to the Los Angeles LGBT Center. Are you crying? Oh. Are you crying? <laughs> There's no crying. There's no crying in baseball. Hardball hilarity from Tom Hanks in the highest grossing baseball movie of all time. Now, exactly 30 years later, Amazon Prime Video is reviving a league of their own in a new series that's decidedly different, yet strikingly the same. We're here for the tryouts. I don't think you understand. This is the All-American League. We're pretty All-American. Who was that? Amazon Prime Video's A League of Their Own is an adaptation of the 1992 film with new characters and new storylines. Abby Jacobson stars as Carson Shaw, catcher of the Rockford Peaches. She also co-created the comedy drama. Let it happen! Ticket, please. About that. The original film focused on the foul play women faced on the field of dreams. Amazon reboot hits even deeper, specifically on what it was like to be lesbian or black in that period. It's going to be really interesting to me to see how people react to this. Like, you know, sometimes you can hold on to the original a little bit too much. And it's like, hey, why not open it up and see what these other experiences are? That's what I think. The original film was directed by Penny Marshall, who along with star Gina Davis, gave producers their blessing for the project. Because she's, you know, such an iconic um, uh, director and we sort of described to her what we wanted to do with the show and she um, was behind it and she said, you know, these stories changed my life and um, and I, I hope, I think they'll change yours too. And, um, and, they, did. and they did, yeah. Right now, we forget the rules. OG Rockford Peach, Rosie O'Donnell, has a brief cameo in the series as well. A League of Their Own is streaming now on Amazon Prime Video. This fool just landed on Hulu about a clean-cut guy who works at a gang rehab center, helping everybody but himself. It's from the minds of comedians Fred Armisen and Chris Estrada, based on Chris's life growing up in South Central L.A. Hugs, not thugs. We rehabilitate ex-gang members. We offer free legal counseling, solar panel installation classes. As you can see, he's a clean-cut guy who faces his biggest challenge yet when his cousin gets out of prison. His cousin is played by viral comic Frankie Quinones, and Fred Armisen also guest stars as well as executive produces the show. It was so fun because it was surprise after surprise. So uh, once they, they got Frankie Quinones on board, and, like, and, and also like as, as they did every new episode, it was just like, it really blew my mind that they can keep making things funnier and funnier. And then when they shot it, it was just, you know, the scenes really play so well. Um, it's almost like you can uh, watch it with the sound off and you could see what's happening and it's still funny. Wanna help us go fight some fools at the park? I can't, dog. I said, like, nerves been acting up. Where's the problem? It is hilarious. Five. This fool is streaming now on Hulu. Who would be intimidated by the Queen of Christmas? But when I saw her, she was in her home with heels on. So that already intimidated me. <laughs> yeah, so when you're getting a pedicure and she's wearing heels, what do you do? Mariah Carey's move that literally gave an LA manicurist a leg up on the competition. Wings took them far, but a villain brought K-pop's new girl group to L.A. Now it's time for the viral video of the week. It's a mashup of Beyonce's latest hit and Denzel Washington's Oscar-worthy monologues. You won't break my soul. I'm telling everybody. I can guarantee you that. Hmm? Because I like you, because it's my duty to take care of you. I owe a responsibility to you. Now, let's get this straight right here now before I go along any further. I ain't got to like you. 
Comedian Christian King is known for spot on celebrity impressions. He nails Denzel Washington's cadence and body language in the video, turning Queen Bay's hit into a scene out of Shakespeare. That clip with Oscar winner Denzel Washington, by the way, was from Fences, August Wilson's Pulitzer Prize winning play. Hi, my name is Lady Camden, and you're watching The Law. And if it's anything like RuPaul's Drag Race season 14, it's a lot. Three letters dominate the charts right now, but one up and coming K pop crew is hot on the heels of BTS. Since dropping their first single, Wings, a little more than a year ago, Pixie has soared to the top of the charts in their native South Korea. Now they're aiming to amplify their American audience. I got an exclusive look at the Pixie Six as they met fans in LA. From a fierce, dark melody Boy, all about it. to bubblegum pop. They have it all, and like a fairy tale, they're spreading their wings to deliver their Korean pop music magic around the world. Nice to meet you. Who is this charming new K-pop group on the rise? Bimo Wings. Hi, we are Pixie. They're called Pixie. The name is said to be inspired by British folklore about a mythical creature that embodies contrary forces. <laughs> Since releasing their first song called Wings in 2021, oh, Pixie is making their debut here in America. Pixie clued me in on a K-pop group that inspires their music. And their dream collaborations? Two artists, Ariana Grande, Zara Lee. Wingsy fan favorite, learning the group's choreography. Here they are teaching steps for their new song, Villain at Otakon in Washington, D.C. Next stop, Los Angeles, taking pictures and signing autographs for a special meet and greet with their L.A. fans. As Pixie plans their return to Korea, they express their gratitude for such a welcoming experience. A message to their American fans? Uh, if you didn't get a chance to see Pixie perform just yet or attend a meet and greet, don't worry. The group is already planning their next trip to L.A. Time Grammy winner Sergio Mendez is the king of Bossa Nova. His hit song Mas Que Nada with Brazil 66 was the first time a song in Portuguese was a worldwide hit. Sergio visited our studios to talk about his new documentary, Sergio Mendez in the Key of Joy, and shared some wonderful memories. Sergio Mendez, you are such an inspiration to me. I play your music when I'm happy. I play your music when I'm sad. <laughs> it is such an you. honor to meet you. My pleasure to be here talking to you. Well, thank you. Can, let's just go back to some of the songs that have been the soundtrack of my life. Mas que nada. Yes. What inspired that song? <sighs> that song was became like a, an international chant everywhere in Japan. It's just a wonderful melody. And, uh, and the record, Brazil 66, and there was a big record all over the world. And uh, until today, like young kids in Japan, in Mexico, they know that song and I, I'm so proud of it. Yeah. My great pleasure to be collaborating with great artists as well. You know, I had the opportunity 
to record with people like, you know, going back to with Stan Getz, with uh, Cannonball Adderley, and many great jazz musicians. And then more recently, Will I Am, India Ari, Erica Badu, Common is in my new album. So it's uh, John Legend, you know. So that's the encounter of. Uh, of creative people and musicians, you know. How does Harrison Ford work into this? You just dropped all these incredible <laughs> names. Yes. And I, I didn't imagine Sergio Mendez and Harrison Ford in the same I know, room. I know. <laughs> so going back to Harrison, in 1970, I decided to, uh, to build the recording studio at my house, and somebody recommended this carpenter, you know. And yeah, that's a wonderful, it's a great story. Yeah, <laughs> serendipity again, yeah. right? I said, okay, you know, so, one day comes Harrison and, you know, with the hat and the, you know, and, the, and I, I like him immediately. It was like one of those things that said, you know, and he told me later he never did a carpentering before. Um, so wait, I had heard Harrison <laughs> Ford had been a carpenter before he, he was an actor. I had my first You were his the first, first job. Gig. Yes. Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, I think so. Anyway. Oh my gosh. Oh, so did you feel the magnetism back then? It was incredible, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I was just starting also, you know, I mean, in a way. And uh, he was amazing, you know, and did a great job. And uh, he's in the documentary. Thank you. And you know, another theme that plays your music, the Beatles. Yeah, oh yeah, I did. You know, I fell in love with them because of the melodies. I love melodies. And then I put my changes to it and my chords and arrange it different way. So I got a, a letter from, uh, from, from Paul McCartney about Fool and He always said, this is my favorite version. Are you kidding? So, yeah, yeah. So that and, uh, you know, all the songs that I, that I recorded that other people had hits, you know, that and uh, The Look of Love. Mm. <clears throat> You know, I love to get a song and transform into something. You know, a great song is a great song. Of course. Period. A great melody you'll never forget. Well, thank you so much, My Sergio. Pleasure being it's here. such a treat. Thank you. And I've always wanted to meet you, so thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Now that I know you speak Portuguese. <laughs> right? Now, yes. now we can tell secrets in Portuguese. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, to be fair, I can sing a little in Portuguese. Sergio's performing at the Long Beach Jazz Festival, then Ojai, then Montclair, and then travels across the country for shows in New York City and North Bethesda, Maryland in September. From a beloved innovator to an L.A.-based artist who proudly gets the finger from her celebrity clients. Be positive. And those, that's the language we need these days. Be positive. Not the blood type. Be positive. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that was his show, and we're getting life lessons from a Broadway legend. I sit down and sing with the iconic Ben Vereen. And it's time to play a little game of this or that. We introduced you to the band of regrets last week. Let's find out if they prefer Britney or Beyonce. And we talked about the Beatles with Sergio Mendez. How about the Beatles versus the Beach Boys? Oh, Beyonce. Britney. Both, that's unfair. Both. <laughs> Britney. Beatles or Beach Boys? Oh, wow. Uh, Beach Boys. Dude, B Beatles. This, I just just picked one. Be both. Both. <laughs> Beatles are, I think, just the best band of all time, but for me personally, I listen to the Beach Boys more. I like both, but I have to say Beatles. Celebs are all about fabulous nails, and a celebrity nail artist is taking us inside a private salon in Beverly Hills to show us the latest trend in nails, vegan manicures. They're safe for animals and you. There's even an eco-friendly alternative to gels, which usually have harmful chemicals. Sarah Chu's designs are classic and chic to complement a variety of glamorous looks. She styled the nails of Tiffany Haddish, Selma Blair, Isa Gonzalez, Amy Poehler, Paula Patton, and Bryce Dallas Howard, to name a few. So Bryce was actually my most recent because she's just left to Japan to do her uh, Jurassic Press out there. The first star she styled was an unforgettable experience. One of my earliest, though, was, um, I would say it was Mariah Carey was pretty early on. Wow. 
and I was full on nervous because I mean she opened the door. I forgot who opened the door, but when I saw her, she was in her home with heels on. So that already intimidated me. <laughs> Since she had a whole vanity set up um, and she had her hair and makeup there and the way she explained she wanted her nails for her toes was that she set her leg up on the vanity mirror and explained to me what she wanted. So all of that just intimidated me. <laughs> Sarah invited us inside the exclusive manicurist Maison, an invite-only nail salon run by Gaël Labrat Personaz, the founder of the first vegan manicure created in France. This uh, house will be mainly for, um, for influencers, for celebrities, I hope, and to try this big innovation, the green flash, and to be convinced about uh, the formula and uh, the manicurist um, revolution. They want more clean things because, you know, in gel you have very bad ingredients in that. Green Flash by Manicurist is a non-toxic gel polish with no harmful ingredients, using LED lights instead of harmful UV rays. It even carries the vegan label by the Vegan Society, meaning it's not tested on animals with no animal ingredients in the product or packaging. It's clean, it's a plant-based formula, and you remove it when you want. Manicura sells regular and green flash gel polishes. Some are already sold out online. You can find them at manicurist.com and manicurist on social media. Triple Threat Talents took Ben Vereen from Broadway to Hollywood. The legend tells a lot about the sweet charity that changed his life. Hi, it's Bosco. I'm a lot, and this is The Lot. Broadway legend Ben Vereen was just honored with the Sidney Poitier Lifetime Achievement Award at the National Black Theater Festival. I sat down with him at his home to talk about his incredible career and fondest memories. Ben Vereen was a triple threat before the term was coined. His singing, dancing, and acting done to perfection. Have you met my good friend Charlie? He starred on Broadway as a teenager, pioneering roles on the stage that would ultimately become iconic movies, like playing Claude in Hair. Oh God, the hair, yes, yes. When the moon <laughs> is in the seventh house and Jupiter. got his first Tony nomination as Judas in Jesus Christ Superstar. Jesus Christ, superstar. Do you think you're what they say you are? Jesus Christ, superstar. Yeah. Do you think you're what they say you are? <laughs> He's had a storied career, but can't pick a favorite role or show, but did share one unforgettable memory. I love them all, but my first show that I did was I happened to be in Manhattan, and there was an audition for a show called Sweet Charity. And so I go to the Palace Theater, and it was like the opening of the film All That Jazz. Every, every male dancer in the world was on the stage, and that's when I met Bob Fosse. And Bob Fosse comes walking down the aisle, and he gets up on stage, he greets us, and he's smoking a cigarette. His ashes are hanging, they're not falling and he demonstrates the, the dance he wants us to do. We're watching, we don't get the, the dance steps, we're watching the ashes, because they never <laughs> fell until he went, okay, do it. <laughs> and we went, what's the steps? <laughs> we sing for you, pray, pray. He's also an activist with a new cause. He just released a song raising money for the children of Ukraine. And church used to say, there but by the grace of God, or you or I, meaning when you see someone in tragedy situation, all these, these episodes that are against human rights and we don't say anything about it, we're just as bad as those who are perpetrating it. He says he'll never stop creating and helping. If I can give you what I have, please take it. That's what we're here to do is to pass it on. And thank you for allowing me to do that. Thank you. <laughs> Ben Marine's song is at WeSingForUkraine.com and raises money for UNICEF.
That's it for this episode of The Lot. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Suzanne Marquez. We leave you with Olivia Newton-John singing one of her most popular songs. The legendary entertainer passed away on August 8th, leaving millions of fans hopelessly devoted.